Hi, it's Katrina. From a cemetery of lost explorers to terrifying shackled skeletons, here are nine of the scariest archaeological discoveries. Number 9. The Franklin Expedition Cemetery Exploring the world in the 1800s was not for the faint of heart. The 19th century saw a scramble amongst European explorers to discover a polar sea route linking the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, better known as the Northwest Passage. One of these expeditions, led by Sir John Franklin, set sail in 1845 with 129 crew members. They felt extremely prepared and confident, with excellent steam engine ships and all kinds of equipment. They had heat inside the ships and three years' worth of tinned food. Shockingly, none of them survived. After spending a year stuck in the ice, the crew deserted their two vessels in hopes of making it back to civilization on foot. Meanwhile, the rest of the world waited to learn of their fate, unaware of just how bad things had gotten. Answers came through the discovery of clues such as human remains, written notes, personal belongings, and eyewitness accounts. The evidence showed that the men died in different places and at different times throughout their quest for survival. During the 1980s, Archaeologist Owen Beatty excavated three of the explorer's remains on Beachy Island in Nunavut, Canada. The remains belonged to sailors John Hartnell, John Torrington, and William Brain, who died relatively early during the trek. After spending over a century buried in the permafrost, the bodies were found remarkably intact. The men died with high levels of lead in their blood, possibly from tinned food or their ship's water system. But a 2016 study determined that they actually died from a lung disease, such as pneumonia or tuberculosis. Their poor health and lack of food exacerbated the situation. Beachy Island contains a fourth grave belonging to Thomas Morgan, an investigator who died of scurvy in 1854 while searching for the lost Franklin expedition. The lost ships weren't discovered until 2014 and 2016, but they were found in practically pristine condition under the icy water. Number 8. Climate-Altering Asteroid in 2016, scientists closely examined northwestern Greenland's Hiawatha Glacier, which they suspected was keeping a secret. It has a strange semicircular movement that was a little suspicious. Good thing they looked because they discovered a 19-mile-wide impact crater hidden beneath the ice, left behind from when an asteroid nearly a mile long struck the Earth sometime within the last 100,000 years. Some scientists theorize that the asteroid hit around 13,000 years ago during the end of the last ice age. At the time, megafauna like mammoths and mastodons were declining while humans spread throughout North America. Anyone within 310 miles of the impact would have seen a bright, massive fireball in the sky. With the energy of seven megaton nuclear bombs, the impact would have come with a massive shockwave, a huge thunderclap, and hurricane-force winds that were felt hundreds of miles away according to Science Magazine. People in North America and Europe may have endured a rainstorm of rock debris, and the greenhouse gases from the crash would have caused more ice to melt. Meltwater would have spewed into the Atlantic Ocean, disrupting ocean currents and causing temperatures in the northern hemisphere to plummet. The discovery of the crater could potentially help to explain a cooling event called the Younger Dryas, which began around 12,800 years ago. In fact, scientists proposed the theory that an asteroid impact triggered the event, but until the crater was found, they had no physical evidence to back it up. If these suspicions are correct, it could provide answers to the extinction of megafauna as well as the disappearance of the Clovis people, a mammoth hunting group who are thought to be amongst the first humans to arrive in North America, and some of the first humans who domesticated dogs. Number 7. Super Gonorrhea the development of antibiotics has saved countless lives with the ability to easily cure bacterial infections. But the microscopic culprits behind certain deadly diseases have risen to meet the challenges presented by modern medicine by evolving into new, bacteria-resistant strains. Take, for example, super gonorrhea. This is a term that is meant to convey that gonorrhea is becoming increasingly resistant to antibiotics and thus more difficult to cure. Several countries, including France, Spain, Japan, the UK, and Australia have seen a rise in such cases in recent years. Gonorrhea began mutating to become antibiotic-resistant shortly after the development of antimicrobials during the early 20th century. Since then, the disease has become increasingly resilient, 
making it difficult to treat even with the so-called last line of antibiotics that doctors resort to prescribing. This leaves experts with little to no existing options for effectively treating gonorrhea cases that prove to be undefeatable by all traditional means. For this reason, the CDC recommends further research and development of new treatment. And safety first. Number 6. Jigsaw Skeletons In 2001, archaeologists discovered four human skeletons on an island in Scotland. At first, the bodies appeared to represent typical Bronze Age burials. Initial testing determined that one corpse, belonging to a male, died around 1600 BC, and that a female had died around 1300 BC. But something about the skeleton struck researchers as odd. Buried in the fetal position, they were highly flexed in a seemingly unnatural way. Further testing determined that the male was not buried until 1000 BC, six centuries after he had died. The female was laid to rest 300 years after her death. Upon taking a closer look, experts noticed that the bodies had been deliberately preserved, most likely by being submerged in one of the area's many peat bogs for anywhere from 6 to 18 months. This marked the first and only known discovery of mummies in Britain. A decade later, DNA analysis revealed that the two bodies were made up of six different people's body parts. The torso, skull, and neck of the male corpse belonged to three other men, and the female body contained a male skull, a female torso, and an arm bone of an undetermined gender. What's more, the female mummy's skull predates the torso by anywhere from 50 to 200 years. Experts surmise that the mummies were created with the anatomy of several different family members, and that they were assembled like a jigsaw puzzle to seemingly represent one person. They don't know why this was done. Archaeologist Parker Pearson theorized that the practice served to create a so-called symbolic ancestor that possessed characteristics from multiple lineages. But not all researchers agree, including Terry Brown, a biomedical archaeology professor who suggested that the borrowed bones were used to replace body parts that had simply fallen off or been damaged. Which theory do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. The Resurrection of Ancient Diseases as icy places around the world are starting to melt, scientists are becoming increasingly concerned that ancient bacteria and viruses could be released into the atmosphere after spending thousands of years frozen in permafrost. Their fears were solidified in 2016 when a 12-year-old boy died and 20 others were hospitalized after being infected with anthrax on Siberia's Yamal Peninsula. Experts theorize that a reindeer infected with the disease died around 75 years ago and the disease was soon encased in frozen soil. The bacteria escaped during a heat wave that caused the permafrost to thaw, thereby infiltrating the local water and food supply. This very scary case left researchers fearing that deadly pathogens will repeatedly infect humans as global temperatures continue to rise. When frozen under the right conditions, bacteria can remain alive for up to a million years, potentially releasing what the news outlet BBC described as a Pandora's box of diseases. Thanks for that. Over a million reindeer died from anthrax during the 20th century alone, and most are buried in shallow graves in northern Russia. Scientists have also identified the presence of RNA from the 1918 Spanish flu virus in bodies that were buried in the Alaskan tundra. Smallpox, the bubonic plague, and other diseases are also likely present in the Arctic permafrost, waiting for their opportunity to spring back to life and infect modern humans. Experts already know that it's possible to revive long-frozen viruses and bacteria. They learned this in 2005, when they brought a 32,000-year-old worm back to life. In 2007, scientists revived 8-million-year-old and 100,000-year-old bacteria that were found frozen in Antarctica. Viruses dating back some 30,000 years were resurrected in 2014 and quickly became infectious. While they were incapable of infecting people, this proved that it's possible for other, more dangerous viruses to re-emerge and target human hosts. 2020 is proof that deadly pathogens can wreak havoc on an entire planet with little to no notice. Number 4. Skulls on Stakes While excavating ahead of the construction of a new railroad bridge over southern Sweden's Strom River in 2009, archaeologists found an array of artifacts dating back to around 8,000 years ago. Left behind by Mesolithic hunter-gatherers, the collection included animal bones, tools crafted from antlers, wooden stakes, and human skull fragments. Also among the evidence were the skulls of nine adults and one infant. 
Found deliberately lodged into a layer of stones, the skulls lacked jaw bones and two bore the well-preserved remains of wooden stakes, representing the first known discovery of Stone Age people mounting heads on sticks. Surrounded by a collection of animal bones that were sorted according to species, the skulls belonged to two females, four males, and two people between the ages of 20 and 35, according to National Geographic. Nearby, the team found the nearly complete skeleton of an infant who was either stillborn or died shortly after birth. The skulls bore obvious signs of blunt force trauma to the top of the head and other injuries, some of which showed evidence of healing. The female skulls displayed evidence of wounds to the sides and backs of the heads, while the males had blows to the face and the top of the head. In the words of researcher Frederick Hallgren, the individuals had been recently smashed in the head and then put on display. The wounds could not be connected with the causes of death, nor was the team able to determine what type of weapon was used to inflict the injuries, or the reasons for hurting the people and putting them on display. DNA analysis revealed that two of the men were probably cousins or more distantly related, according to Hallgren, but this does not lead experts any closer to answers as they try to disentangle the mystery of the only case of Mesolithic people engaging in this type of burial practice. On the contrary, these prehistoric hunter-gatherers were known to respect the dead. It's believed that the skulls became separated from the bodies during decomposition. There are numerous possible reasons for the injuries, including abuse, warfare, and cultural practices. Experts believe that the skulls may have been put on stakes to honor local community members or as trophies. But the truth for this display remains a mystery. Number 3. Mummified Lung in 1959, archaeologist Michel Fleury got quite the shock when he found a preserved lung. It was inside a stone sarcophagus in the Basilica of St. Denis in Paris, where many French kings are buried. Along with it were a skeleton, jewelry, textile and leather fragments, and a strand of hair. The remains belong to the 6th century Merovingian queen Arnegund, the mother of King Chilperic and one of King Clotaire's six wives. Identified based on a gold ring bearing the inscription Arnegundus, she lived sometime between 515 and 580 AD. For decades, numerous questions surrounded Queen Arnegund's lung, including whether it was mummified naturally or deliberately, and why it's her only preserved body part. In 2016, researchers concluded that the lung's remarkably intact state likely results from the copper belt that was placed around Arnegund's corpse prior to her burial. The belt deposited large amounts of copper oxide into the lung, which scientists detected during biopsies, and it had an embalming effect on the organ. Experts also determined that the queen's body was injected with a mixture of spices and aromatic plants, which may have contributed to the lung's preservation. Number 2. Neanderthal Cannibalism Around 49,000 years ago, a group of hominids murdered and cannibalized 13 Neanderthals at El Cidron a karst cave located in modern-day northern Spain. In 1994, cave explorers discovered the victim's skeletal remains, prompting archaeologists to excavate the site. Over 400 artifacts were recovered, including animal bones and an array of stone tools. The group consisted of three adult males, four adult females, three teens between 12 and 15 years old, two juveniles between the ages of 5 and 9 years old, and one infant. Mitochondrial DNA analysis indicates that the individuals were a family, with the men being closely related and the women coming from outside the group. The bones lack the bite marks customary of a carnivorous animal attack, but contain cut marks made by stone tools, leading to the conclusion that the group died at the hands of other hominids, rather than animals. Several of the bones show deep cuts, including evidence that they were cracked open to obtain marrow or brains. Relying mostly on a plant-based diet, the victims were malnourished when they died. It's likely that their killers were also struggling to acquire enough food and that they murdered the group out of desperation. This morbid discovery reminds us of the alarming reality of what people are capable of when driven by hunger. Number 1. Shackled Skeletons from Ancient Greece In 2016, a mass grave with skeletons clamped in iron shackles was found in an ancient Greek cemetery south of Athens. There were at least 80 skeletons found shackled at the wrists, but who they were and how they got there is a mystery. Everyone appears to have been killed the same way, all tied at the hands. Most of the remains are of men who were very young and healthy at the time they were executed. Now they lay in areas of dugout ground, some in long neat rows, 
Others piled on top of one another with their arms and legs twisted and their jaws frozen open. Dating between the 8th and 5th centuries BC, the cemetery holds more than 1,500 bodies, with others laid to rest in ceramic pots and other adults burned on funeral pyres. During that time, Athens was a place of unrest, with everyone fighting for power. Some researchers believe the remains could be from followers of Cylon, a noble and Olympic champion who staged a coup in Athens in 632 BC. When his coup failed, Cylon supposedly hid in the temple of Acropolis before he later escaped, but all of his supporters were killed. It will take further DNA testing to determine just who the remains belong to. Now the necropolis will be made into a site open to the public, and the shackled skeletons will get their own display underground to preserve them. Thanks for watching! Which discovery did you think was scariest? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!